So hello everyone and welcome along to Susty Talk, ED's new series of video interviews put together to keep our audience of sustainability and energy professionals talking, feeling connected and optimistic uh, during this unprecedented, as much as it said, uh, period of lockdown uh, and now easing out of lockdown in the UK and beyond. I'm ED's content editor Matt Mace and joining me for this episode of Susty Talk we have Hans Dames uh, who is the Group Public Affairs Officer at Hitachi Europe and who oversees the company's uh, corporate social responsibility program. So Hans uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Where, where are you, whereabouts are you joining me from? Hello Matt, Th first of all thank you uh, for inviting me and, and, and really great series of talks you've, you've put there. Uh, really managed to keep us going as well during the lockdown so i'm i'm based in uh, in in berkshire so uh, it's a it, it's 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 a great place to be slightly outside of town uh, uh, and to be working from home what i've been doing since uh, since march yeah okay good to know um and in terms of that work and then how how has that uh how has that been in terms of you being able to kind of the age of your team and other kind of departments at Hitachi um, to start with at the beginning of lockdown? How was did that take some getting used to? Um, I, I think in our team we're all already uh, thinking for a long time how uh, working from home was going to be something new for us. Uh, uh, and, and something that actually could be a driver for, for improvement. Uh, so as such, people were already uh, used to be working from home one or, or more days a week. Uh, um, what probably has changed is the scale of this, uh, with everybody working from home at the same time. And secondly, also as well, I think it's obvious that people with young children at home, it isn't that obvious. Uh, so you get also to know sometimes the children, which add a little bit of freshness during the conversation as well, I would say. I think probably for me, the, the biggest learning lessons are, are two. It, it's, it's very important to create certain routines. Uh, and for, for us, quite of the routines is also have regularly conversations on not only what and how we do certain things, but particularly also to keep focus on why we are doing certain things. And the second thing which I, I'd like to add to this is what you're probably missing most, and I, I hear that from a lot of people and colleagues as, as well, is these more informal conversations. Eh? You have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea together, and that's a lot areas where uh, interesting discussions start, where creativity starts developing. Now, what I found a personally very interesting evolution is that you're actually able to reach out much more with colleagues and 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 uh, uh, people in, in, in other organizations in a much more easier way. Just to give an example, uh, um, and uh, last Friday we had a conversation in the early morning, first of all with people in Tokyo, then we switched to people in Germany in the afternoon, we were liaising with people in the US. That's definitely not something uh, we would have been able to do before. And and it's, I believe as well, and that's for me uh, probably the most positive thing, it's easier for more people to engage in conversations as well. And I think that is probably good for diversity as well. It, people that for whom it was more difficult to travel in the past now definitely find it much easier to be part of conversations which were in the time when we we're all still traveling much more difficult. No, definitely, uh, definitely true. Um, and I think that, you know, it, it's turned a kind of global, of, you know, companies into very kind of localized, yeah. albeit virtual meetings um, much more kind of uh, quickly than before. And obviously, lockdown is is easing, it's it's picking up. We're not going back to normal, there's there's no yeah. going back to that. But um, in terms of um, your your company and your team, what's kind of, what what's happening right now? Has, has sustainability always been kind of, um, accelerated or, or running at a steady pace throughout lockdown? Was it kind of somewhat delayed, somewhat? How, how's the workflow now? No, I, I don't think, and, and that's something which we feel is very important, Hitachi, is, which, which is a very large Japanese organization, is the workflow isn't changing. It, it's just having very good conversations on, on how you can keep the workflow and and how you can make it even a, a, a stronger driver of actual improvement. And it's very encouraging to see when uh, the top management of the company 
announced the updates on our midterm management strategy. Japanese companies have three-year management plans, which was done uh, in May, the, 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 the very uh, high moments of, of the lockdown. Uh, um, the, the commitment for us to creating environmental, social, on, in addition of economic values, is still a focus which is very much there. So I would say that sustainability has always been there, has always been the driver of improvement and evolution and is very much at the heart of the strategy of the company and that hasn't changed i would even say that we like to talk in our company about social innovation and how that can be powering good and probably this is an ideal time to be able to uh, to, to 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 talk about this but even more importantly to do it and a company like Hitachi has so many touch points across so many different sectors. I mean, construction, transport, mobility, healthcare, you know, you, you, you're kind of like a hidden thread throughout uh, every every one of those sectors um, yeah. in a sense. So um, how this new normal looks is, is going to probably impact Hitachi and, and, and the kind of services and products you you provide. From a sustainability standpoint, how how is this kind of green recovery mantra that's being kind of mentioned and, and somewhat adopted by some governments, depending on where you look? Yeah. How, how, how do you see that kind of change in um, Hitachi moving forward? Yeah, so so I, I think what is quite key to us is, and, and that probably makes us unique, eh? is that we are a company and we like to talk about having a combination between OT and IT, operational technologies combined with information technologies. Let's give the example of the trains. So we are now a quite well supplier of, of rolling stock in the UK, for example. Uh, the recent IEP programs with trains uh, running across the UK. And on top of this, we have IT systems, which are going to make those trains much more intelligent. And just a few examples for this. Uh, by trains making them more intelligent, we, we can have a, a, a much more intelligent way of maintaining the, those trains uh, because we have data uh, and a lot of data which gives us an exact situation on how trains are performing and what pieces need to be replaced at a certain time. There's no point in replacing a piece, a part of a train, which is still operating fine. Eh? So we, we've, we've got a much more modern view at, at, uh, at dealing with this. It's, it also allows us having data to much being able to predict how many passengers there are going to be. And I think particularly looking at post lockdown now, uh, I think uh, th there's definitely an opportunity as well to see how social distancing is going to work and can be uh, uh, respected in public transportation. If you have data on how many people there are in the individual cars on trains, it is going to give the operators a, a, a much stronger uh, um, uh, set of, of information and data in order to optimize their business and ultimately to uh, to make transport uh, uh, and keep transport which is very safe in this post lockdown situation yeah i was um coincidentally i was i'm um, trying to sort out uh, one of my best friends his his stag do for next year and, we, and, I, and the whole transport thing's been really kind of puzzling to me is how how you know trains and planes and just get into a destination is going to be kind of uh, enforced in in this kind of safe way for society so uh, the fact that data can kind of play a role in that is is good to is good to hear um and i want to touch on you mentioned with hitachi and their new kind of approach to creating environmental and social value mm -hmm. as well um and I think that's going to be really key for, for a lot of businesses um, yeah. in terms of consumer and, and customer trust going forward, that, that, that they are kind of um, championing environment and, and more so now than probably ever before, that social justice as, as well and, and value in terms of creating a, a safe and healthy planet for, for the people yeah. that live there. Um, how, you know, in terms of the building blocks of, of that, how, you know, how, how do you feel as someone that's put that strategy out there now, how do you feel other businesses can can implement a strategy that isn't just focused on economic gain, but environmental and social gains too. Yeah, no, that's a, and and thank you for this question. I I, th I think this is ultimately going to create the difference between c companies that are going to do this this very well and and companies that can drive this change. And I think the most essential point when it comes back is 
how central is this to your strategy? Uh, because if, if it's just a nice add-on, it's not going to work. If it's just about getting great communication to be able to put it on your social media, on your website, th that's not going to work. So for us, and, and, and this is great. So Hitachi, Japanese company, we are actually celebrating now uh, now in July, our 110th anniversary. And there's something extraordinary about Japanese companies, how they like to go back to what, when they were all still very small, to go back what the creators and the founders of the company uh, were saying. And in, in times where, where, where of crisis, uh, we like to go back to this. And, and uh, our founders said, we want to contribute to society through our products. Uh, later on, this of course was added by our technologies. But that's very true, and that's always been the essence for, for the company. So th this question, which is very central, why do we do this, uh, is always there to contribute to society. And probably the way we call this right now is Hitachi is powering good, uh, which is maybe a more modern way of, of saying this. But then ultimately it's coming back on how are you going to reflect this in, in, in your day-to-day -day activities? In, 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 in your management plans, in, in the strategies for the individual businesses. How, what I think is very important as well is how you're going to engage with your customers. Eh? Because there is this very interesting, and, and I, I think in this respect, the SDGs are brilliant. It creates a shared vocabulary where people in the business can go out and say, look, we see that in your uh, strategy, you, you, this focuses on the SDG, which is really the time of, of of, of engaging and talking with your customers on how you can come together on this strategy. Um, and we are working with people in our business, for example, uh, and, and we are doing some, some, some work with senior management teams across Hitachi companies in Europe on how this sustainability agenda is going to be a driver for, for sustainable growth in the business going forward. No, the SDGs is a really good point actually because we've seen this green recovery talk for 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 you know a few months now, um, and it's kind of come from kind of green groups and NGOs driving it, and governments very much repeating the rhetoric that they will deliver a green um, recovery. Obviously, uh, the UK um, and, and announced their kind of first stages of the plan, yeah. which which pledged to be green and and didn't have too much green in it um the eu's probably gone a bit better actually ring fence some funds but i'm yeah i'm surprised that the sdgs which are essentially a mechanism built for governments and nations hasn't really been reflected much in by governments and nations but it has been picked up by businesses and they're really kind of pushing yeah. towards that do you have any views on as to why that might be but but uh, I think there's no choice. Uh, it, it's uh, it's and and I, I think it it also co is, comes back to to identifying what is the role of of business in in society. We 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 are very genuine and very close to what we think are the vision and the mission of our companies. Uh, and and th this is now increasingly becoming part of of the daily vo vocabulary uh, in in working together with your your clients. Uh, ultimately. And, and there's something which we'd like to talk about within our company, which 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 we call quality of life. How how are and this is very much to do with the why do we do business? How ultimately is the quality of life of the customers of our clients going to improve what we 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 can do? And this is very much on a social and an environmental uh, an environmental level. And I think once again that. A reliable high-speed train transport is an excellent example for this uh, because you can at the same time lower emissions, increase reliability and for example you can increase quality of life because people will be able to spend more time with their families. This is of course when everybody will be going back to, to working from, from an office of, of, of course. Yeah, but, no, no, definitely. And they, um, then there's no telling as to when that, yeah. that might be um, yeah. at the moment. Uh, OK, Hans, um, I suppose final question then is is just the fact that, um, you know, it's it's July, it's it's over halfway through the year and it feels like we've had a big chunk of it kind of taken away in the traditional sense, but still been out to work. What's what's on the horizon and as as we kind of approach this new normal in terms of um, your your remit as kind of heading up the CSR strategy? What, what are your main priorities for the rest of the year? 
So I, I, I'd like to mention two in here. W one is we 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 are uh, we are something which we value a lot because we get a lot of important input from this is stakeholder engagement. Uh, we in in order to identify, in particular, what is material, uh, what has impact on society in terms of the certain things which we are going to do is we like to bring together group of 15, 20 people, uh, very senior people. Eh? And f for this, uh, we, we've all has been doing this in a, in a face to face setting. Now we're starting to think about if if people will 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 continue to be working from home and and travel is going to be more limited, how can we continue to do this in in this new normal? Eh? Uh, because we should not stop doing this or doing this in a different way, because because we are more restricted in in how we can do certain things. And the second thing which I would like to highlight is uh, working together with our business to to bring this. Because even though I'm saying look, SDGs is the same vocabulary, ultimately we think that sustainability and the SDGs is is really going to have to become the, the, the very central part of business conversation. So we will be doing some internal education with our, our leaders in our business to start talking about identifying the sustainability agenda for your customers. How can we help? by working together with them, helping our customers to achieve their sustainability targets. And, and we have some good examples for this. And technology can be truly extraordinary with this. We've developed, for example, with some uh, 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 company operating large uh, uh, vessels, ships in the, in the Nordics. We've developed an artificial intelligence solutions which help to predict uh, uh, and, and to reduce consumption of, of fuel, which ultimately has the environmental benefit of reducing emissions. So uh, it's, it's quite important for us to see how this can really become a structural and long-term part of those business conversations. Eh? Okay, now so the engagement aspect in particular sounds uh, very important at this time. Yeah, kind of yeah. And for, this, uh, for this, we, we also like to work very strongly with external credible organizations. So in our case, we like to work, for example, with CSI Europe, this networking organization in Brussels, because, because you have to really build up a dialogue. It's not... And that's when we started doing this 10 years ago. That's what we were doing. We were talking a lot towards stakeholders, eh? almost trying to convince mm -hmm. them of our point of view. But it's much more stronger when you have a dialogue, eh? when you can listen. And uh, um, uh, when you hear back from the, the stakeholder dialogues, and that's why also we find it important to follow up with them. After six months, what have we done? What kind of feedback have we taken into consideration in our planning going forward? Yeah, talking with them rather than at them. I think the sustainability yeah, exactly, is, yeah. is yeah. sustainability is mature to the point where we can do that now, which is uh, which is great. Um, Hans, thanks so much for for being a guest thanks on, on again, this series. Uh, um, it's it's been a it's been a pleasure being John. I know I know things you know are are still absolutely manic for for anyone that's kind of working in the in in a business sphere right now. So I do appreciate you taking your time uh, to that's speak to me. Thank you very much. And, and it's always a joy to watch all the colleagues uh, speaking with you and your colleagues uh, from the magazine. Thank you. Great. Well, yeah, and, and we will be, you know, we will be continuing this series um, throughout. So for those who have been uh, listening today, um, we'll hopefully see you all again soon for, for our next episode of Susty Talk. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay positive and keep up the Susty Talk. <laughs>